GCSEs and A-levels are nothing but a game. I always say this, but intelligence doesn't really matter that much when it comes to GCSEs and even A-levels. What really matters is how you study. To get all nines in your GCSEs or all A stars in your A-levels, it's quite simple. You just need to get higher marks than 95% of the people taking that same paper with you in all of your subjects. Now, that might sound hard, but let's really think about it. Just look at your school or college. What percentage of students uses active studying techniques? What percentage of them even know what space repetition is? What percentage of them just rely on reading and highlighting? As you look around and observe, you're going to quickly realize that 95% of the students at your school or at your college don't know how to study. So if you learn how to study properly, then by default, you're going to be ahead of 95% of students which means you're going to be an all nines or all A stars student. It's really that simple. So naturally, the next question is, how do you revise properly? Well, by the end of this video, you're going to have my three step process that allowed me to study for any subject, no matter how boring or difficult it is. Now, before we get into the actual revision, we need to lay down some foundations, and that is mentality. Do this with me right now. It might sound goofy, but if you're really serious about getting all nines or all A stars, then you're going to have to get used to doing abnormal things. Close your eyes and just pretend like you're hitting delete on every single subject that has caused you pain before. Any negative emotion you've ever experienced with a subject, whether you've gotten a bad mark or found a topic really difficult, it never happened. Okay, now open your eyes. Now, I know the majority of you did not close your eyes and do it with me. You just watched me do it like an idiot. So I want you to go back and actually do it. This is really important because it will lay down the foundations of the mentality needed to get the top grades in all of your subjects. You should now feel like a fresh baby, curious towards every single subject that you take and knowing that with enough effort and with the right studying techniques, you can master it. And that's the number one thing that holds people back from getting the top grades, their mindset. They're convinced that they're just not intelligent enough. But now that we've fixed your mindset, let's move on to the actual revision. We need to start with a very important concept, and that is every single subject is different. Look at this Venn diagram. It shows you the three core elements that any subject will be composed of. In other words, any GCSE or A-level subject you take will fall somewhere on this Venn diagram. You can get a copy of this Venn diagram for free, as well as a guide on how to use it using the first link in the description. I'll give you a couple of examples. Physics and basically any science subject will go right here. English Lit and Lang would go here. And Maths would go here. You probably get the idea. So before I would start revising, I'd look at every single subject that I take and place it in its appropriate place on this Venn diagram. And that would give me an idea on how to revise for that subject. And now that we know where every single subject goes, we move on to step three, and that is crafting an efficient study routine for each subject based on its place on the Venn diagram. Since any subject can be a mixture of all three, the way we approach any subject will be a combination of the studying techniques that cater to each element that makes up that subject. In other words, there are studying techniques that are specific to each element. So if a subject contains an element, then we'll use the specific studying technique that caters to that element in the study routine for that subject. Here's an example. We previously said that physics goes here. So it's a combination of problem solving and memorization. So to craft the study routine that we're gonna use for physics, we take the studying techniques for memorization and the studying techniques for problem solving, and we just combine them together to make the study routine for physics. And so the next question is, what are the study techniques that cater to each element? Don't worry, we're gonna go through each element. I'm not holding anything back today. Let's start with memorization. Hands down, the best studying technique for memorization is making your own flashcards and going through them. Flash cards alone combine so many important concepts like active recall and space repetition. So if a subject requires memorization, then you need to make your own flashcards and go through them. Also, emphasis on making your own flashcards. When you make your own flashcards, that's when half of the learning happens. That's when you first understand and digest the information. So if you're using pre-made flashcards, you're missing out on half of the learning process. And if you want to know exactly how to make and use flashcards, then watch this video right here. Now that's memorization. Now for problem solving, it's simpler but it's more work. The only way you revise the problem solving element of any subject is simply just doing more practice questions. Now I know it's not the most attractive answer, but that's the truth. There's a direct correlation between how many practice questions you do for a subject that has the problem solving element and the grade that you end up getting. So if a subject contains problem solving, then you know that you're gonna have to do a lot of practice questions for it. And now essay writing, the element that I personally struggled with the most but eventually I overcame it. Now, when it comes to essay-based subjects, there's two parts. Firstly, most essay-based subjects have a set structure that you could use for every single type of question. For example, English language, paper one, question two, is always gonna have the same structure. Paper one, question three, same structure. Paper two, question four, same structure. So the first thing you need to do when it comes to an essay-based subject is to find that set structure for each type of question. You can find this by asking your teachers or just doing some research. There's a lot of YouTube videos that talk about each subject at GCSE and A-level, and most of the time, if it's an essay-based subject, then they'll run you through the structure that you need to follow. Now, the second part for revising essay-based subjects is what I call the practice feedback loop. 
here's the loop. You practice an essay, you give it to your teachers, they give you feedback, and then you just repeat. You do that again and again and again until your actual exam. This is a very simple technique, but this is what I use to jump up three grades in English. And also as a pro tip, since essay-based subjects tend to be a bit more subjective, especially English, try to ask multiple teachers for feedback every time you do an essay, even if they don't teach you. Just try to find multiple teachers and most of the time they'll give you feedback. There's two reasons to do this. First of all, we said that essay-based subjects are more subjective, which means that there's gonna be feedback that is individual to each teacher and then other types of feedback that you're gonna notice is common amongst them. We need to focus on that common feedback because that's what the average examiner is gonna be looking for. The second reason why I would ask multiple teachers for feedback is simply because you would get more feedback per practice question that you do. Let's say I do a practice essay and you do a practice essay. I go to one teacher and ask them for feedback and then implement it, but you go to three different teachers and ask them for feedback. You're getting three times more feedback than I am, even though you did the same work, which means you're improving three times as much. And so it's important that you ask as many teachers as possible for feedback because you're getting more for your work and so you're increasing the amount that you're improving per practice essay that you do now those were the three elements and how to revise for them now all you need to do is just implement firstly make sure that your mentality is in check and then get a copy of the venn diagram and place each subject that you take on the diagram and then based on its position craft a study routine that's efficient and effective that's what no one is doing and so if you want to get all nines or all a stars you want to beat 95 percent of people then if I was in your position, that's what I would do. And since there's not that much time left until the exam season, if you wanna take your grades to the next level and jump up three grades before the exam season, then check out the ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs and A-levels in the second link in the description. What we talked about throughout this video is just a preview of what I teach in that guide. Not only that though, you also get a personalized study plan. All you do is just tell us what subjects you take and we'll take away the headache of you figuring out how to revise for each subject. You also get weekly Q&A group calls with me and access to the Elite Revisors community. So if you're interested, click the second link in the description now.